then step 2 is to calculate the seismic weight capital W and we already have discussed in the modeling criteria what things should be added to to your to calculate your capital W and the third step is to calculate the base shear base shear is what it is the reaction of all the applied earthquake forces which are representing your future earthquake so there will be some forces which you have to apply and which you are calculating actually now so their sum is actually base shear right so the approach is that you directly calculate base shear their sum and then divide that base shear along the height and then apply as the applied loading right so that v is equal to cs which is the seismic response coefficient uh, it is also sometimes called as the base shear coefficient times the seismic weight right so cs is the main thing which you have to calculate multiply it with w you will get the horizontal forces sum of all the horizontal forces so if your cs comes out to be 0 0.1 uh, it means that your future earthquake is going to produce lateral forces which are 10 percent of the weight of the building right if it is 0.2 which means 20 percent of the weight of the building so step three is to calculate base shear uh, by determining this base shear coefficient so main task is to determine cs right so there are several expressions for cs available the main expression is this one 12.8 dash 2 it is saying that SDS over R over I. Now you know everything. What is SDS? What is R? What is I? Right? So this is the main expression for calculating CS. But then there is an upper limit also and there is a lower limit also. Right? So once you calculate this CS, then you check upper limit on CS and you also check the lower limit on CS. Upper limit is dependent on the time period which you have already calculated. Uh, in the in the step one, you have to compare it first with a quantity called long period long long period transition period TL, which is somewhere around eight to twelve second. It is a uh, defined as the time period uh, which after which the slope of the spectrum changes. So it is somewhere around eight nine or ten second, right? there is a map available for tl values also for us in the asc 716 uh, for pakistan we were unable to develop such a map but you can use around 8 second uh, for this tl right so for most of the low to mid rise buildings even for high rise buildings also the first mode time period will be lower than this tl right so you will be somewhere in the first range for almost all the cases right unless you have an ultra high rise building where the time period is more than 8 second in that case you will go for the second option otherwise for most of the cases you will be t less than tl case so this expression which i am encircling now is the upper limit on cs which means you apply that expression and if uh, your calculated CS is more than this answer, then you use this upper capping, right? For example, this expression gives you 0 0.5 and this gives you 0 0.4. Use 0 0.4, right? Uh, this expression, the upper limit on CS is using SD1. Original expression was using SDS, uh, R and I now it is using sd1 time period also and r and i also right so which means that if you plot cs as a function of time period of the building uh, for the time in which the expression 12.8 dash 2 is governing uh, the cs will be flat because it is independent of the time period but then uh, when the expression 12.8 dash 3 will start governing then it will be inversely proportional to the time period so the line will be somewhere like this right inversely proportional and if uh, after some time period tl which is around 8 second or 9 second then it is inversely proportional to t square so which means the line will have a, a, a change in slope another you can say curve will start 
from T L onwards, right? But the trend will be downward because it will be inversely proportional. Lower limits on C S again larger of these two values. Uh, first one is using S T S and I, and the second one is zero point zero one. So just select first whatever is the larger of these two and use it as a lower limit, right? So C S if it is if the calculated C S is let's say zero point zero zero five, you already know that the lower limit is zero point zero one, right? So the C S cannot be less than this number. So if it is calculated and it is less than that, use the minimum one. And then again, the second criteria explaining the lower limit is related to S one. If your S one is greater than zero point six G. then use this expression to calculate the lower limit right and this expression is using s1 directly now s1 is what original long period spectral acceleration with without any effect from from uh, local soil without reducing by 2 by 3 right so s1 will be used in this particular particular criteria to calculate lower limit right so all of these expressions you apply lower limit upper limit and finally come up with cs right this number will be multiplied by with capital w and you will get these the base shear of your building right so this is the main step in your equivalent lateral force procedure one thing one issue in this uh, this uh, calculation of cs is that uh, Section twelve point eight point six point one prescribes that if this expression is controlling C S eight dash five, which means uh, this one lower limit. If lower limit is controlling C S, it may not be considered for computing drift. For computing elastic drifts, the T computed can be used without the upper limit. So let me explain these two sections. We know that. Uh, in some range 12.8-2 which is the original expression without time period uh, that will govern so our cs will be flat horizontal independent of the time period on x axis then 12.8-3 will start governing and then we will have a lower trend uh, just like this uh, an inverse trend with respect to t but there is a lower limit on cs also which is 12.8-5 and then lower limit uh, let's say it starts from this point onwards right so dotted line is the lower cap right now the expression uh, the the provision is saying that let's say that your ta is somewhere here your t computed is somewhere here coming from the modal analysis and the upper limit is somewhere here right so let's say your ta was 1 second approximate uh, the approximate time period from the empirical expression your t computed from modal analysis was 2 second and the upper limit cu times ca ta that is let's say 1.5 second right so the code says that you should use cu ta to compute the forces so cu ta 1.5 second is your final time period but at the same time code is also saying that this uh, computation of forces should be based on the cuta time period computation of drift should be based on the t computed time period so you should use the actual time period of the building to compute drifts but cuta time period to compute forces right this is one catch in this so you should consider this provision so it's it, it means in short that the time period used to calculate forces and the time period used to calculate drifts and displacements can be different so it means that uh, you should make two computer models one to calculate design forces and the other to calculate uh, the drifts uh, if you if you are in this case that your t computed is greater than the upper limit right so you use two two second time period to calculate drifts but use 1.5 second time period to calculate forces right so this is one catch you you should not miss so just to further explain that thing let me 
शो यू डिफरेंट केसेस लेट से योर अपर लिमिट एंड योर टी कंप्यूटेड बोथ आर नॉट गवर्न बाय द लोअर लिमिट विच मीन्स बोथ ऑफ देम आर इन द सॉलिड लाइन राइट देन इन दैट केस यू विल यूज सी यू टी ए फॉर वी बी कैलकुलेशन ऑफ फोर्सेज एंड टी कंप्यूटेड फॉर द कैलकुलेशन ऑफ ड्रिफ्ट राइट दिस इज क्लियर now let's see another case where your upper limit is on the solid line but your t computed is on the dotted line right actually it is it is more than you can say the intersection of dotted line right in that case again you will be using the cuta for calculation of vb and you will be using t computed for calculation of drift right third case will be that both of these points Uh, are on that uh, they are beyond that lower limit criteria right so your equation original equation was this one your second equation was this one and dotted line is showing the lower limit criteria right so what cs value you should you should use for calculation of vb you will be using cuta and cuta now is on the dotted line because the lower limit criteria is is being governed so you will be using that dotted line point on that dotted line that will be your cs for computation of uh, vb or forces for t computation for uh, for the drift computation you will be using t computed and at the same time you will not be considering the lower limit criteria right so now let me go back again to those two provisions if the lower limit criteria is controlling cs it may not be considered for computing drift which means that whenever you are here 12.8 dash 5 your computed cs is less than the lower limit you will use the lower value right but that will be only for the computation of forces for computation of drift you will be using the actual cs value right so just now come back to that third third case right so your uh, this point will be used to compute force but a lower value of cs this one somewhere here that will be used to calculate the drift right so your lower limit criteria will not affect your drift calculation but only affect your force calculation i don't know how many of you actually actually apply those checks or things in your structural design but you should not ignore that provision right again some cases when 12.8 dash 6 controls uh, which is again the second of the lower limit criteria so three different cases i show so i summarize all that discussion with just one sentence and that is that your t which you should calculate you should use to compute forces and to compute uh, drift can be different right and then resultingly and also the cs which you calculate for calculating vb and calculating drifts will be different right so in some cases the lower limit criteria is not applicable when you calculate drift and it is applicable when you calculate forces right so please keep all those things in mind so when the the, the ultimate result in application would be what that you will be getting the forces from a different computer model and drifts may be coming from a different computer model with different t value right and with a different cs value right